Hi class, this is your actual professor, Professor Williams. Um, I will be making supplemental videos for the videos that um, the other professor has not made in her set. We are today going to talk about acute angles and right triangles. Okay, so these are going to be um, acute triangles. So we're basically solving application problems using the methods that we've learned so far in the course, right? using sines, cosines, tangents, um, things of that nature, right? So, <clears throat> for the first thing to cover, we're going to be talking about the historical background, right? So a little bit of uh, the basics, bearing, and further applications of what it is that we're doing today, okay? So, <clears throat> there are two methods for expressing bearing. Okay, so bearing is basically the direction that you're going. So, for instance, if you're out at sea and you're on a ship, um, your bearing is always relative to north. Same thing for if you're flying a plane. Um, the direction you're heading is always given as an angle that's referenced relative to due north. Okay, so <clears throat> when a single angle is given, for instance, such as 164 degrees, it is understood that the bearing is measured in a clockwise, okay? So, so far, pretty much everything we've been doing has been counterclockwise. So, in this instance, we're talking about from due north, an angle of 164 degrees, right? So, from due north in a clockwise direction. So, for instance, this would be 32 degrees, a 32 degree bearing. This would be a 164 degree bearing. So from due north, if you are flying 164 degrees relative to due north, you are sort of flying more southeast, right? Um, this is a 229 degree bearing and a 304 degree bearing, right? So these are just examples for um, bearing when given just a single degree measure, okay? So let's do an example. Okay, using bearings. So there's two methods to discuss bearings. So right now we're discussing the first method. So let's say that we have two radar stations. Okay, they're on the east-west line, right? And they are 3.7 kilometers apart from each other. Okay. Station A detects a plane B. And the position of that plane is on a bearing of 61 degrees. So that means from due north, if you turn 61 degrees and follow that line, you will eventually hit that plane that it detects at point C. Okay. Uh, point, the station B also detects this plane, obviously, because it's actually closer to B from this image, it looks like. So, if this is on an east-west line, due north is 61, that means that this is a 90 degree angle, and the angle uh, measured from B to C, we can call a 29 degree angle measure, right? So if B simultaneously detects the same plane at a bearing of 331, you create a clockwise angle of 331 degrees, um, and that will give you the measure, right? So same thing here. Um, at about this point right here, since this is a 90 degree measure, this is 270 degrees. So if you go 331 minus 270, you will get your angle measure here, okay? So we want to find the distance from A to C, okay? From A to C, All right? So if we do the subtraction here, we can find that this is also a 61 degree angle measure. Um, we can also, also figure that out from our... Um, our translational lines, right? So <clears throat> right here, right angles are formed at A and B. So CAB, CAB, and CBA are going to be as shown uh, here, okay? So <clears throat> if you add these up, 29 and 61, obviously that's gonna add to 90, meaning that C forms a right angle. Uh, because all of the angles inside the triangle have to add to 180 degrees, right? So these angles are uh, complementary CAB and CBA. So 
what we can do here is we can start to try to figure some things out to find this measure of B. We have a right triangle. Okay. So if I do cosine of 29 degrees, it is going to give me a value. So remember that the ratio of this cosine for um, 29 degrees is going to be, um, in this case, this is across from the right angle. So this is your hypotenuse, right? So cosine of 29 is going to give you your adjacent side over your hypotenuse side. So whatever value we get for cosine 29, we can set up that equality and solve it, which we'll do here. Um, and we can figure that out, right? We could have also done, um, that's pretty much it, right? Because we have the hypotenuse. So cosine is going to be B over 3.7. Okay. We can solve for B by multiplying both sides by 3.7. Okay, so 3.7 times cosine of 29 degrees. And you can plug that into your calculator since cosine of 29, 29 is not one of our standard angles that we have an exact value for. So we can get our decimal approximation. Um, the distance we're given is at an accuracy of one decimal point. So you want to give your accuracy to one decimal point as well after you do all your calculations. So be careful, okay? A correctly labeled sketch is crucial when solving bearing applications, right? So some of the necessary information is not off is often not directly stated in the problem, and you can only figure out that information by sketching an accurate graph. Okay. So when I say accurate, again, it does not have to be um exact, meaning for instance shorter side and a longer side. I can draw this triangle all funky if I want, as long as I'm labeling everything correctly. That's what matters, right? If this side is extremely long in comparison to this side, when that's not actually how it would be um, in real life, that's fine, okay? As long as I'm accurately labeling things, that's what matters. Okay, so let's talk about the second method of bearing. So the second method starts with the north-south line. And you only use an acute angle to show the direction, whether it's east or west from this line. Okay. So for instance, from north, this would be a bearing of 42 degrees. So north, 42 degrees towards east. South, 31 degrees towards east. Right. You are south and you're going to go 40 degrees towards west. Okay. West is this way. East is this way. North is up, south is down, if you did not know that. North, 52 degrees towards west. Okay, so that is the second method of bearing. Here you're given a starting uh, pole and then your ending direction as well, where your angle is going towards. Okay, so again, if you're only given one value for bearing, one degree, you're just going strictly in a clockwise manner. If you have sort of a starting north-south line, and then an ending uh, east-west line is telling you kind of uh, a, a map for where you need to start trying to map these things out towards. Okay, so let's do a second example. Okay, so a ship a ship leaves port and sails on a bearing of north 47, 47 degrees east for three and a half hours. Okay, so I would start off by drawing that first, right? It then turns and sails on a bearing of south. 43 degrees towards the east for four hours. Okay. If the ship's rate is 22 knots, which is nautical miles per hour, find the distance that the ship is from port. Right. So the first thing we want to do, of course, is draw a sketch. So we're going to choose a point C. Okay. So we're going to nautical, nautical, uh, we're north. We're going to go 47 degrees and head that towards east for some distance, okay? 22 times three and a half is gonna give you the number of miles here, right? So three and a half hours at this many uh, nautical water, right, miles per hour. So that's how we can find the distance from A to C. <clears throat> um, and then we're gonna do the same thing from there. He then turned and headed south, but towards the east with a degree of 43 degrees right so then this is how we would change that so we draw our north south line and from the south 43 degrees towards the east 
we know he went on that route for four hours again at 22 knots, right? 22 miles per hour. So we can find this distance rather easily as well, right? So <clears throat> what we can do here is we can figure out what, um, by the transversal lines, that this angle and this angle have to be the same, right? Because you have two parallel lines and then an intersecting or connecting segment between them. So then you have the, uh, the inner angles on the opposite of the transverse line being equal to each other, right? Um, so from there, if we add these together, it's very clear here that this adds up to 90. So this is actually a 90 degree angle here at C. If we're looking at the triangle A, B, C, right? So the angle A, C, B, it's a 90 degree angle, okay? Um, now this value D here, okay? is the it's really just given to us so that we can start to create an angle measure for 47 degrees here right so that we're looking at a c and we just chose some random point on this line that we're calling d so that we can say that this angle formed here is 47 so don't get too caught up with this placement of this value d here it really doesn't do anything but allow us to give a name to this angle that we found from the uh the transverse lines okay so from here, uh, we can complete this triangle, okay? Because we really want this distance. We want the distance from A to B, right? So our question here, right, is find the distance that the ship is from port. If this is where port was and it went this direction for some amount of time, then this direction for some amount of time at a constant speed, what is its distance from its original port? And so that's what we'll do. So we can find this length easily, we can find this length easy. And then when we have the two sides, um, it'll be rather easy in that case to use either Pythagorean theorem or a sine cosine sort of measure to try to figure things out, right? So um, let's see here. Okay, so we just took our picture. So next we're gonna use the formula relating distance rate and the time to find the distances from A to C and from C to B. So remember, three and a half mile, sorry, three and a half hours at 22 knots. Okay. It's going to give us the 88 nautical models for this one. And for three and a half hours, three and a half hours will give us our B value of 77. Okay. So it was really easy to find both of these. This is very straightforward multiplication. Um, so from here, since it's a right triangle, the easiest thing to do is going to be Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared is c squared. So we're just going to square our terms, add them together, and then take the square root. Okay. So a is 88 because it's across from our angle a. b is 77 across from our angle b. Okay. So plugging all this stuff in and solving for c, it's going to give me the square root of 88 squared um, plus 77 squared, which is going to be roughly 120 nautical miles okay so that's how we would solve a bearing problem in this case so again you're just drawing the picture that reflects what it is that's going on and then apply your wonderful trick skills that you've learned so far in order to answer the question so now let's talk about the sub tense bar method okay so this is a method that surveyors use um, to, to, to determine a small distance which we'll call D, right? So D should be relatively small uh, between two points P and Q. So if you don't know what a surveyor is, those are the guys that go out with the little, um, they have the little instruments and they, they have the uh, right uh, reflective vest out and they just do all of the uh, calculations for building and land management and things like that. Okay. So the subtense bar with a length of B is centered at Q, so it goes up B and a half, and it goes down, sorry, not B and a half, half of B, and it goes down half of B, right? So the center is at Q, so half is up and half is below this subtent, this bar. And it is perpendicular to the line of sight between P and Q. So for the line from P to Q, it forms a right angle with that. And in fact, P, Q bisects this subtense bar 
uh, which we'll call B, okay, or has a length of B. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a triangle, basically, right, where the angle is also bisected, right? The angle is um, cut in half by this line from P to Q, right? And if we do this, right, if we know what the angle is, then we can figure out what this length D is, okay? Because we basically have two right triangles, so we can use the right triangles to solve our system. So, for instance, find D, okay, this distance, if my angle is 1 degree, 23 minutes, and 12 seconds, and B has a length of 2 centimeters, okay? So, if this is my angle measure, then for P, Q, up to here, my triangle will have a length of D, this will be half of B, so half of this, so one centimeter, and this angle measure will be half of this amount, and so we can use this right triangle to solve for D, because I have one side, I have two sides, and an angle measure, sorry, I have an angle measure and a side, so I can use tangent, right, because I need, I have one side given, I need the opposite, I need the adjacent side, and I have an angle, so I can use opposite and adjacent together with the angle given, that's tangent, I can use tangent to solve for this, right? So first things first, um, let's turn this into a strictly degree measure, right, with decimal form so we can plug it in. Um, from the figure we have cotangent um, theta over 2, right, half of theta, so we can use cotangent or tangent, they're using the same thing, right? Um, here we're going to use cotangent, so for cotangent it's d over b half, which we can simplify to solve for d as b one half times cotangent over half of this angle, All right? So b is 2, convert theta to decimal degrees so that we can plug it in. Again, you can use tangent with this as well. Here we're using cotangent, which is fine. So using the minutes and seconds formula that we learned way, way back. Um, this is your decimal form of your degree measure. Okay, so obviously here it looks like we have a running six. So we got to cap it somewhere. We round it up since the last numbers are sixes <clears throat> forever and ever. So plugging that in, if B is two, half of that is one. So I need cotangent of half of this angle in order to solve for D which is going to be 82.634110 centimeters. Okay. So how much of this would change <clears throat> if the value of D, if we were one second larger? Okay. So instead of one degree, 23 minutes and 12 seconds, whatever it was, 13 seconds, what would be the difference? Okay. So what that means is we have to change this degree here, put it in decimal form, find our answer, and then we're asking for the difference, not what the new value would be, right? So to find the difference, we find the new value and subtract from that the old value in order to find the difference, right? So since theta is one uh, second larger, we have one degree, 23 minutes, 13 seconds. And if you transform that, Okay, which you should be doing right now on your own. You should definitely be working some of this out as you watch this video, right? Um, this is what your degree measure should be in decimal form. <clears throat> so when we plug it back into our equation, okay, pretty much everything is the same. And we are going to be slightly larger, okay? Slightly larger because we have, uh, let's see, we have 634110. And here we have... 6, 1, so we're slightly less, we're actually slightly smaller, apologies, right? So then the difference between these, right, so from what we had minus what we're looking at now, it's a difference of less, you know, a little more than a hundredth of a centimeter, okay? So let's look at our next example. So Francisco needs to know the height of a tree, okay, which is given by H. From a given point on the ground, he finds the angle of elevation to the top of the tree is 36.7 degrees. So he walked an unknown distance. And from there, you can tell the angle from the ground to the height. Okay. Uh, he then moves back 50 feet from the second point 
the angle of elevation to the top of the tree is 22.2 degrees. So find the height of the tree to the nearest foot. So you basically have two triangles here that share one side, right? That has equal sides. They have different measures. One you kind of sort of have the, um, the length of, right? You have a piece of the length. Remember this whole length here is 50 plus X. This length is X. So the figure has two unknowns, right? The height of the tree and the first length that was given okay okay so as two unknowns x the distance from the center of the tree trunk to the first point where, where the first observation was made and then also the height of the tree so since nothing is given about the length of the hypotenuse here or here of either triangle uh, we want to use a ratio that does not involve the hypotenuse, so a tangent or a cotangent will make sense here, right? Um, what we're going to do is basically we're going to build two ratios and we will solve them both for the h value and set them equal to each other, okay? So <clears throat> for triangle A, B, C, okay, I know the tangent of 36.7 is going to be h over x, okay? The tangent of 22.2 is going to be h over 50 plus x. Okay, and I can set those two h values. I can solve both for h and I can set them equal to each other. Right? So tan 36.7 is h over x. Okay? So that implies that h is equal to x times tangent of 36.7 degrees. Okay? 10 of 36.7 is an actual value. When I plug it in, I'll get that out. However, I don't know what I need to multiply that by yet. All right. Um, for triangle BCD, I have tangent of 22.2 degrees, which is a value I know is going to be H over this whole length, which is X plus 50 or 50 plus X. Okay. So if I solve for H, I have 50 plus X times tangent. 22.2 degrees. So now I have two values for H and I can just set those two things equal to each other. Okay, so each expression equals H, so the expressions must be equal to each other at that point. Okay, so one equals the other, and then now I just solve for X. So here you can find values for tangent here and use them, that's fine, although you're probably going to get some rounding error, right? So if you use four decimals here, um, the better thing to do is to leave these values alone until the very, very end, okay? That's always preferable. So do your algebra around the symbols for the angle measures of tan that you have, okay? So for instance, if I want to start solving for x, I can distribute this out. Okay, because remember, this is just a real value right now. It's just a number. It can distribute across my parentheses. All right. So next thing I want to do, I basically want to get the, tan the x values together. Okay. So I want to move one of these over to the other side. So that I can now factor out the x value. Okay. And then now to get x alone, I just divide both sides by this value. Okay, so especially since we are doing division right now, we definitely don't want to take two decimal places, three decimal places, four decimal places for these tangent values and then do the math on them because you're now doing math on rounded values, especially when you divide by a decimal, your numbers get super, super funky. So really what we want to do is you want to use the exact values for as long as possible, okay, until you get to your final answer. So notice I never ever introduced the decimal value of tangent of 22.2 degrees. I never plugged that into the calculator and used that value. We want to leave that for the very last step. So from here, I would plug everything into my calculator at once to get a single value. Okay. So <clears throat> what I'm doing now is I'm taking this uh, value of H and I am plugging my x, right, because this would actually be a value here if I plugged into the calculator, 
and I'm going to plug it into one of my H's. H is this thing, H is also this. What I solved for was X. I did not solve yet for H. So I'm taking my X and I can plug it either into here to get H or I can plug it into here to get H. I should get the same value either way because it is the same height of the same tree. All right. So if I plug my X value that I solved for into X tan 36.7 in this case, right? I decided to plug it into the uh, left hand side instead of the right hand side. I should get approximately 45. Okay, so this tree is about 45 feet tall. All right, so again, this is an application problem, so your answer should make sense in the question in the in the context of the question. All right, the question was how tall is a tree? If you just tell me 45, I don't know what that means. Is it 45 feet? 45 meters? 45 inches? 45 centimeters, 45 miles. I don't know what 45 means, right? So you need to answer the actual question with the value that you got, right? So let's say we did that same thing, um, but we do this by using our graphs instead, okay? Our graphing calculators. So here what we're doing is we are putting an axis on this, okay? So we have an X, Y axis now superimposed on the previous problem okay so the tangent of the angle between the x-axis and the graph is equal to the slope of the line All right so this line right here this tangent is really just the slope formed by going over x and up h okay so for the line from d to b since the slope is tangent of 22.2 degrees, okay, we have that M is the rise over run or opposite over adjacent, yada, 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 over tangent. So here, since B is zero, okay, the equation of the line, right, so here this B is not talking about the side across from this angle. We're talking about y equals mx plus b, right? This line here is the line that goes to the origin, right? The y-intercept is at the origin, so the b here is zero. So my equation for this line, d to b, I will call y1, and it's just tangent 22.2%, I'm sorry, 22.2, .2 degrees times x okay so the equation of line a b is going to be the tangent of 36.7 plus some value of b because if i continue this down it's going to cross the y-axis somewhere down here okay so since b is not equal to here zero here we use the point a 50 okay here because we go out from here, from here to here is 50 and 0, right? It's on the x-axis. So this point on the axis would be 50, 0. I move out 50 and I go up and down none, right? And so I can use this slope and this point to find my intercept for B. So if I plug in 50 here, I should get out 0, right? So then that's how I would solve for B, okay? Or I can use a point slope form, which I don't like, which the book likes to use here. So I have two points. I'm plugging in 0 and 50. My m in this case is tangent of 36.7, right? Since x1 is 50 and y1 is 0. So my equation looks like this, okay? And so I want to graph y1 and y2 and find the point of intersection. So I'm going to graph this line that I found, and then this previous line that I found, and where they cross here will give me, the output of that line will give me their solution, okay? So notice that my graph looks like my drawing here without this triangle. I have one line and then I have the other line, 
So this is, let's go back here, D, A, and B. This is D, this is A, and this is B. And the height of their intersection is the height of the tree, or 45.092889, or roughly 45 feet. Okay? So that is the secondary way of finding it by using it and translating this into a graphical equation where you're using a system of equations instead of your um, trig methods. Okay? Thank you.